India's $195 billion IT industry is increasingly making its presence felt across the world. In FY22, its revenue grew by $30 billion to reach the $227 billion mark. The industry registered an impressive 15.5% growth and, according to NASCOM, it was the highest since 2011. The industry also added the highest ever 450,000 new employees in FY22, taking the employee base to 5 million. But even as it recruited a record number of new talent, the industry was besieged with an all-time high attrition rate. Just look at the IT bellwethers. At Infosys, on a last 12 months basis, the attrition rate hit a record high of 27.7% in the fourth quarter of FY22. Meanwhile, India's largest IT services company, Tata Consultancy Services, saw record attrition in the March quarter at 17.4%. And IT companies have been at their wits ends doing their best to retain talent. Some resorted to novel ways to keep employees on board. According to reports, companies doled out salaries much above the prevailing market rates. Some even gave 100% hikes. Employee stock options were also being dangled in front of software engineers. Fintech firm Bharat Pay offered BMW bikes to new entrants. Techies who have a few years under their belt are now getting multiple job offers. Some IT companies, fintechs and even startups have started delaying the payout of employees' performance bonus in a bid to delay their departure. Apparently, this gives the company more time to find a replacement. But why this churn? Experts believe that demand for digital talent has outpaced supply. The pandemic has also caused an acceleration in digital adoption. This, too, has contributed to the intense race for talent, not only from the IT giants, both global and domestic, but also from nimbler startups. But some experts also believe that this churn cannot continue indefinitely and that things will settle down sooner rather than later. However, the skill sets that were at the center of the talent race will still be necessary for any aspiring techies who want to make it big. According to the Team Lee's Digital Employment Outlook report released last December, the IT BPM industry had set its eyes on digital skills in FY22. And among them, 13 skill sets were going to largely be in demand. In fact, they were expected to record a 7.5% growth in FY22 over FY21. Also, according to the same report, the demand supply gap is widening for data engineering, data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence skills. A talent solution and IT staffing expert Business Standard spoke to also emphasized on these skill sets. In my opinion, if you talk about the skills which are very relevant and uh, will remain in demand uh, you know, for the next few years, they are artificial intelligence, machine learning, user experience uh, designing skills, cloud computing, data analytics and data science, and cybersecurity. They are going for the experience range between four years to uh, eight years because the, those are the resources they can readily be deployed on, uh, on projects and they can be productive and pre performing from day one. And the organizations are actually trying to tap that talent pool and um, you know, just to create their own uh, capability and capacity. That is the focus um, you know, for the organization, laterally hiring these resources. However, the IT industry and in fact, most businesses are standing on the cusp of momentous changes the effects of which are yet to be fully understood. Some are skills that can be trained. So trainable skills are the ones that will naturally flatten over, flatten over a period of time. You will have skills, technology skills around data, around predictive sciences, around modeling, around cloud computing, etc., etc. These are skills that can be trained. And with high demand for these skills, there are more people who are applying for these skills, have more training happening around these skills. So these skills will, that's why I was saying, that over a period of time, you'll probably find these skills flatten out the demand and the supply of these skills will broadly meet each other. And I don't know when or how soon it will be, but it will happen. The kind of skills that I, where I feel is a, is there is a gap and that gap will take some time to fill in are more individual centric skills. These are skills that are, that can still be trained, but where the individual's personal capabilities, inherent strengths come into a larger play. 
than just um, a classroom training or an online training or whatever the, the, the format might be. And these are skills which I was saying is, is more on the area of uh, being able to work in a more virtual environment, hybrid workplace or otherwise, whatever the case might be, work will necessarily be more virtual than it used to be. And the ability to work in a more virtual environment is a ability to communicate, ability to manage, ability to resolve conflicts, ability to manage growth, all of those things in a hybrid work environment, a virtual work environment is very different from doing that in a very face-to-face, in-person work environment. So that's one skill that I think will take time to build. The second is a skill, a skill capability or whatever we would define it is around how you have stronger design thinking capabilities. Now, design thinking capabilities, particularly from the perspective of how a user experiences a product or a service and how the organization is able to design product and services, keeping the end user in mind. Now, all of those skills can also be taught. I'm not saying this can't be taught, but the excellent people or excellent individuals in those skills are people will have, who will have more inherent capabilities than those would have, who would have just gone through many courses. So therefore, that demand will always, to some extent, outstrip supply. Clearly, techies will have to adhere to upskilling religiously. But what about the industry? At the end of the day, a company can either build the talent or buy it. But if the churn doesn't indeed subside in the coming year, could it be perhaps time for the industry to look at a third option? They may also look to borrow, so to say, talent by engaging companies that provide temporary staffing solutions. There will indeed be a dearth of digital talent that can keep pace with technology. Take for example the potential of the metaverse and the skills that it will require. With 5G becoming the norm in the coming years, the Internet of Things will also take off in a big way. The situation is dynamic and thus it is hard to predict whether the same skills that are so in demand today will still be at the top five years down the line. They will remain relevant, no doubt, but will they still command the premium that they do today? Only time will tell. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.